In 1999, in the semi-final of the Champions League, Manchester United would overcome Juventus to reach the Champions League final. In the other semi-final, Otmar Hitzfeld's Bayern Munich would advance beating Dynamo Kiev. Yes, that's right, Dynamo Kiev, who finished bottom of their 2021-22 Champions League group with just one point and struggled to even qualify for the Champions League group stage routinely. But at one point, they were one of the best sides in Europe and this wasn't a fluke either. They'd also been to the European Cup semi-finals in 1987 and won the Cup Winners' Cup in 1986 and 1975. And all of this success comes down to one manager, Valery Lobanovsky. But before that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, TopTierTipster.com. If you're a football fan and you like to bet on certain matches, but you don't really have a clear system or strategy and you feel like you're just losing money, then definitely check out TopTierTipster.com. They've got all the information on their website, which will be linked in the description below. On their site, they've got receipts from their wins and testimonials from people who have used them. So if you are interested in making a bit of money from betting or just need some help, definitely check out TopTierTipster.com. They will be linked in the description below. Lobanovsky had been a uniquely talented footballer in the USSR before going into management. He made his debut for Dynamo Kiev in 1959 and he was a fantastic dribbler and would often score directly from corners. He spent seven years at Dynamo Kiev before moves to Odessa and Shakhtar before retiring at just 29 after claiming he was sick of what he called anti-football. Lobanovsky would play under legendary Soviet manager Viktor Maslov, who was the man to bring the high-pressing 4-4-2 system to the Soviet Union. After his retirement, Lobanovsky would devise his own football theory. While studying heating engineering at the Kievan Polytechnic Institute, Lobanovsky would have a chance meeting with statistician Antoly Zelensov. It was this meeting that would inspire Lobanovsky to develop his own theories about football. He devised a system of 22 elements in a match, two subsystems of 11 elements moving within a defined area which would be the pitch and subject to a series of restrictions which obviously is the laws of the game. If the two subsystems were equal, the outcome of the game would be a draw. If one was stronger, then that side would win. The aspect that Lobanovsky found most fascinating was that the efficiency of the subsystem was greater than the sum of the efficiencies of the elements that comprise it. That, as Lobanovsky saw it, meant that football was ripe for the application of cybernetic techniques being taught at the Polytechnic Institute. Football, he concluded, was less about the individuals and more about the connections between them. He would put these methods to the test in 1969 when he became manager of Dnipro, a team in one of four Ukrainian second divisions. After three seasons, Lobanovsky was able to get Dnipro promoted and in his first season in the top league, he would lead the side to a sixth place finish, one point behind Dynamo Kiev. After this success, Lobanovsky was appointed Dynamo Kiev manager in 1973. During his first bow in charge from 73 to 82, Lobanovsky would win five Soviet League titles, three Soviet Cups, and the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1975. Also in 1975, he would be appointed the manager of the Soviet Union national side, while still managing Dynamo Kiev. But after failure to qualify for Euro 76, he would be sacked, but this would not be the last time he would manage both club and country at the same time. During his first spell at Dynamo Kiev, one of his players, forward Oleg Bolotkin, would win the Ballon d'Or in 1975, the first of three players to win the award under Lobanovsky's management, and I'll come on to the other two later on in the video. But in 1982, Lobanovsky would leave Dynamo Kiev to become the manager of the Soviet Union yet again. And to be fair, he was quite unlucky to get sacked as the Soviets were leading their Euro 84 qualification group but lost in the final game against Portugal after an incorrect penalty was given for a foul outside of the box. Once again, VAR didn't do its job and the penalty stood anyway. After the defeat, surprisingly, those in charge of the Soviet Union weren't the most sympathetic and so he was sacked. He returned to Dynamo Kiev in 1984 with the side in crisis, finishing 7th and then 10th in Lobanovsky's first season. But Lobanovsky was able to rekindle the success of his first tenure, winning the league and cup double in 1985. Then in 1986, he would win the Cup Winners' Cup final, with Dynamo beating Luis Aragonés' Atletico Madrid side 3-0. That year, Igor Belenov would become the second Soviet player under Lobanovsky to win the Ballon d'Or. And the third player would be a player that I think you probably know, but we'll come on to him when we get into the 90s. Lobanovsky's side were praised, being referred to as a team from another planet. 
Lobanovsky would use a 4-1-3-2 system with two versatile centre forwards, capable of drifting out wide to the flanks, dropping deep to link the play, or sitting high and central. A key element of Lobanovsky's system was a high pressing and quick transitioning of the attack after the ball was won back, commonly referred to today as a counter press. And Ralph Ranić has credited Lobanovsky's Dynamo Kiev side with inspiring his love for the Gagan pressing style after his Victoria Bagnag side were demolished against them in a friendly in 1984. After barely qualifying for the 1986 World Cup, the national team would come calling yet again, but this time from 1986 to 1990 and Lobanovsky would this time co-manage Kiev and the national side yet again. With the Soviet Union beginning to open up, many of the USSR's best players were no longer available for selection after leaving for Western Europe. However, despite this, Lobanovsky led the USSR to the Euro 88 final where they would eventually lose to Rinas Mikhail's Dutch side. In 1990, after a poor showing at the World Cup, Lobanovsky would leave for high-paying managerial jobs in the Middle East, managing first the UAE and then Kuwait. During his second tenure at Kiev, Lobanovsky would win three Soviet League titles, another three Soviet Cups, and another Cup Winners' Cup. However, that wouldn't be the end, as Lobanovsky would return to Dynamo Kiev in 1997, after realising that the Ukraine had a golden generation of players like Andrei Shevchenko, Sergei Rebrov, and Ole Lusny. And it was from here where Lobanovsky would create arguably his most successful Dynamo Kiev side. Under Lobanovsky for the third time, Kiev won five successive Ukrainian league titles from 97 to 2001. But it was the Champions League where they would make their name. They were drawn in the group of death in 1997-98, being drawn with Barcelona, Newcastle and PSV. Dynamo would go on to get out of that group, beating Barcelona 3-0 at home in front of 100,000 supporters and then 4-0 at the Camp Nou with Shevchenko scoring a hat-trick. That season Dynamo Kiev would eventually go out in the quarter-finals to Juventus, but the season after in 1999 they would go one stage further, reaching the semi-finals after defeating Real Madrid over two legs. They would draw 3-3 against Bayern Munich in the first leg of the semi-final before losing 1-0 in the second and missing out on the Champions League final against Manchester United. At the end of the 99 season, Shevchenko would be sold to AC Milan for $25 million and after two more league titles, Lobanovsky would eventually die aged just 63 in May 2002. A year after that in 2003, after scoring the winning penalty to win the Champions League for AC Milan, Shevchenko would go back to Kiev to show his former manager his medal. And that same year, Shevchenko would be the third player under Lobanovsky's management to win the Ballon d'Or. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, check out some of my others which will be linked in the description. And subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when my videos come out.